Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. I talk a ton about one of the best ways to improve your gameplay is by doing VOD reviews. For someone new to the game to even a pro player at the top of their game. What I love is that this is a topic we cover a ton on the channel and we got a positive sponsor to back it so a quick shout out to my friends over at NVIDIA. I was planning on doing this type of video and everything just lined up perfectly so I'm really excited that this happened to line up. So for those who are on console, I see in the comments all the time, we can't record, we're on console. Well, one cool tool to maximize on is the NVIDIA GeForce Now. You don't need a beast computer. You connect through the cloud to an NVIDIA machine you can select through a vast library of games, including Apex Legends. With that GPU shortage, we all know how difficult it can be to upgrade your current machines. Well, not a problem with the epic use of the cloud, you can gain access to an NVIDIA machine and even play with RTX on. Also added benefit since recording can also be resource intensive, NVIDIA GeForce Now lets you record knocks, eliminations, and wins. And it's important that you figure out when you succeed, but also when you fail, which is what we're going to do in today's video. Also, something to give back is that there is a contest for these clips sponsored by NVIDIA. Let's talk about how you enter. So as you VOD review, you might as well just upload them and we'll upload them to gfnlegends.com. And once you upload them to the site, it'll prompt you to share them on Twitter. You can win an Apple iPad, Google Pixelbook, and more. It's just something nice to add on top of everything. You're spending all this time VOD reviewing, might as well just upload it and get yourself something for free. Link and information is also in the description down below. I'll be sure to remind you guys at the end of the video. Now take a look at my screen. I have folders upon folders of my gameplay that is recorded. I do it for content, but also to review how I am doing. So what we're about to cover, I put into practice. Also a heads up, today's video is going to be quite long, but as per usual, I will timestamp everything. I'm really sorry it's so long, but I promise this will teach you how to break down your own gameplay and moments when you fail and succeed by me going through the motions of myself and how diligent you need to be. There's going to be a follow-up video to this because of the change I made to my setup is long overdue about proper ergonomics and how you should sit when you game, which is a highly requested video here on the channel. Today's video format is going to be what I changed in my setup that required practice, my horrible start to that change and what I learned through VOD review, then we're going to do a positive VOD review on when I did 4000 damage as Watson, and also still what I could have done better even though I got 4000 damage during that game. We're going to do wrap up notes about NVIDIA GeForce Now. And well, let's just get right into the video. So let's start with the change. I'm going to provide a screenshot of my setup. So how you sit and play makes 100% an impact on your aim, potential pain points and blood flow. What I have done is I purchased a platform to raise my chair, which was about three to four inches too short for my current desk. Unfortunately, I'm not the tallest person in the world and the desk is a mix of sitting slash standing. While I could sit comfortably, I needed to change how I sat slightly. Not even by a large margin. This margin made the difference between my arms sitting ergonomically versus a very slight angle. When I practiced, I actually limited my speed and after hours of gaming put unnecessary pressure on the back of my shoulder. I needed this change because I needed my shoulders to sit lower and for it to be at a nice perfect angle when I play. This helps succeed in managing quick turns and angles when aiming, but also maintaining speed and accuracy. Now let us go into the first games when I played with Sore Hollow and how rough it was at the start. I definitely, it's really small, very small changes, but huge in the long run. Later that night, I grinded out some aim lab and realized how much faster I was with the change in how I sat. This allowed me to adjust my sensitivity and refine. I was topping all of my prior scores just from this change. Okay, now what we're going to do in this VOD review, we're going to analyze two arena games that I played with Sore Hollow, then we're going to go into the battle royale mode where I started to feel a lot more comfortable after a few rounds in. Still wasn't perfect, definitely had some shortcomings, but at least you started to see a bit more improvement with my aim and getting comfortable. So let's just start breaking down the VOD here. So in the first round, I had Sore Hollow, we queued up with a Rand and we got him even in the sec second round actually, whenever we were queuing up. So just kind of a happy coincidence there, but Hollow and I squatted up. I needed him to kind of help me. I knew that Hollow would definitely carry pretty heavy overall in the round. At least it can help me figure out my flaws if the other two players, or at least another player is really doing quite well. So we did win these rounds, spoiler alert, but I definitely felt really bad about my gameplay. It made me overthink a whole lot. I was thinking too much about the way I was sitting and it took me a little bit to just kind of settle on in. So we took height. This was actually my first time on the map since I had been shout casting a lot of rounds. And I will pause to kind of highlight some things. So we pushed this together. I'm right on Hollow, which is my teammate here. So we get into a first fight. He pings 
and I have his angle and I have him here I kind of whiff a few shots it looked like it kind of had a a hit there now this was kind of a dumb mistake here immediately right off the riff a dumb mistake of what I should not have done kind of ego push and this is the bad part I jump down immediately there's one to my right there but I'm also getting shot over on the left I go ahead and just focus on the lifeline and my shots are slightly off because of the way I'm sitting which is very big to kind of highlight and this does cause me to ultimately go down I'm really relying on hollow to really clutch this out this is a mistake that I made on my part and you're gonna see where I notice my aim just it's why I changed my sensitivity just slightly for, because every little change that you make of how you sit and what you do impacts your sensitivity even if you're sitting just a little bit differently in how you control your mouse and even your arm so we managed to clutch out in game one so that's a that's a positive round that's not too bad but I did I'm the one who actually made the mistake I relied on my teammates there to really clutch up the round despite me you see how I mentioned that even if you have a really good round that it doesn't matter if you won because you still review back what were the mistakes I was the mistake there my teammates were carrying me at that point even though I did a little bit of damage so if we go into game two I, I even called out to Hollow. I was like well, that's my bad I shouldn't have jumped there I just wasn't thinking and I, it's because before, you know, I'm very confident. I just kind of felt like I would jump down. And it's good to be confident in your aim, but the downside of me jumping down like that, even if I land on my shots, it doesn't really matter because I'm taking unnecessary damage whenever we could have just had the angle together. Hollow was playing it smart. He held up top, and I was just not being very smart and ego pushing. So we have the jump patterns, the zip line. He pops the zip line. There we go. So we get height because, you know, height is always the best thing that you need in a gunfight. It's just going to be a lot better so I know here in just a moment what you're gonna see my wingman shots I'll highlight in just a second I'm probably gonna slow down the footage might go a little bit frame by frame let me see does it let me go frame by frame oh okay Went a little bit too far so we'll go ahead and pause it and then we'll probably I'll probably right click and slow this down just so you guys can see the mistake that I'm making okay so this is another mistake of just dropping down without any cover so I immediately actually drop down here let me make sure I didn't miss anything we'll go back okay that's gonna be the next round that I remember that I made the mistake but notice how the lead up here if I don't have information where the enemy is at the worst thing I can possibly do because I'm looking for the information this is not a bad drop I do see my teammate is there he gets a knock so I I got a little bit too confident with this but I drop here I have no cover so if anybody shoots me in the back what am I going to do absolutely nothing he goes underneath I was gonna try to run over that was the initial plan but I should have stayed on the second level where I knew that I was safe and immediately what happened here is I got shot so it doesn't really highlight the mistakes on my aim per se because I do a 180 and I miss the first two shots I get the second one there that you see and then I go down so again I made the same mistake by dropping down on height not having the right amount of information and it's just a lot of little things can add up of why you're making mistakes it you could be that you're having a bad day that you're not focused on all the things you know yourself on what you should be doing in this case I was overthinking how I was sitting and it just was throwing me off it's simple things like that you could even have a bad day let's say you had an argument with a friend and then you hop in game you're just not thinking clearly this is why you know at a pro level that those things can make such a big difference and even at this level you mean we're you know it's arenas and luckily here he comes for me to pull up my shield because he's going to use it as a as cover so even if you're down don't let it be the end of the game because I did cover him when he needed it there and he calls for it again I wait and let, he's going to come when he needs it I cover again because I also don't want to block the shots but I want to give him cover when he needs it so he's constantly trying to bait him here see whenever I know he calls for it again I think they actually just clutch it out so even if you're down you're literally an extra barrier and you see this all the time especially in ALGS whenever they clutch this out this is a 2v1 they should have this you can tell the enemy team really knows what they're doing as well they're probably in comms only two of us hollow and I are in comms the third just isn't but there we go so that game had nothing to do really with me really winning uh, it was mostly my teammates carrying there also a big downfall on my part so when we look at the next game here we go on height and I'm probably gonna slow down the footage this is where I really identified that I had a shakiness with my aim so let me slow it down and you'll notice later as I started getting comfortable with how I sat it definitely got a lot better so let's go with slower so you see here the, the shots are not bad those I, I initially it wasn't good but it wasn't bad and there we got cleaned up so the next shots here are a little bit more iffy of course I'm dropping that's fine 
you can kind of see here. I'm, I'm like overextending on those two shots. You can see it. It's like a it's like a weird flick when it should have been a lot smoother. If I'm flicking, I'm over flicking. So why would you over flick? When you over flick, it means that you're compensating too much. That you you're just you have too much speed and too much force. Normally the sensitivity was already really slow, and so I the way I was sitting before that movement would be, what's the word I'm looking for? It would be it would be the exact force that I would need to compensate for how much I'm dragging. But since I was sitting in a new way. As you can tell, I was over flicking and I felt it. I felt it all night when I was playing. I was like, it felt like everything I was doing was like super fast or faster than it normally was. So if I switch back to just kind of the normal playback here, I overextended this and I push, but the push kind of cost me. This wasn't the worst idea in the world, but I didn't push on my teammate. I just knew that he was rezzing, so I had to try to stop the rez. That's kind of the overall goal. And then I rely on Hollow again to clean it up. I believe that he does, and then we win the overall match. There we go. So that's that's all three of those matches, and we won that. So that's that's great. But even though we won, I still played horribly, and I'm fully aware of that. I mean, I try it again just to see how I maintain consistency and if I do any better. So I position. I kind of take height here. We did the same strat like before. Very similar situation. We're doing a lot of peaks from before, a lot of head glitching. And what I'm finding is I'm even trying to refine my aim and get some long range shots. I just feel like I'm overshooting just a little bit, which is why I need to kind of compensate because it's the way I'm sitting. The way I'm sitting has made that big of a difference and impact. And it does. A pro player will definitely bring up how they're sitting in a tournament and so forth and how they're going to shoot and lead a shot. This is also my first few games on during the day. And I purposely recorded these, especially with Hollow, because I wanted to highlight to you guys what happens when you make s these type of changes and the impacts that it does make. And you can, because it's just it's just noticeable in the aim. And then once you notice later, once they start warming up, it definitely gets a little bit better. So I have the somewhat good movement here. I mean, I'm ho having an angle over here, which is good. At least I'm we're taking angles with one another. This was a better round, but most of the damage was done by I believe my teammates. I was just kind of there as a support, right? So we push again. I'm trying to figure out, this is also me learning the map a little bit. I mean, we played this on Olympus many times before, but what's different here, and the low bolt does a break here. Just FYI, the low bolt doesn't always work, but luckily it worked there, so that's good. And then we'll talk about the battle royale and some very quick highlights of that, and then we'll talk about the damage that I had with Watson once I got really comfortable, and we'll, you'll notice definitely in the aim and how it just evens out. So I take some shots. Initial shots, at least I'm starting to hold back. I'm trying to play a little bit more patiently with my teammates. And this happens in Arena. The reason I chose Arena with Hollow, one, because it's a great warm up, and then two, I wanted to get immediately into fights and really highlight what was wrong with my aim and also sensitivity. So we decide to, decide to rotate on the south side here. We push over together to take a whole different angle, but at least we're using cover and positioning. Not the best cover, but at least cover, and we're both taking angles together, which is why. This works. The downside is that they still have a height, but we're trying to make a push up and trying to separate out to make it a little bit harder for them. I do get a crack here, which is some good positioning. I get a knock, which screams for hollow, and I tell him immediately to go for a push, which is what I'm trying to back him up and do. I do not queue up because I know how much time it takes to get out of it, and I've made that mistake before by utilizing my queue. So I go in and take the zip, and then I come right back up with him. And then he should clutch this out. Because at least that knock did do something there. Get 41 damage in. And I jump down. Try. I get him in the head and he goes right back up to hollow. This time I use my Q because I know that he's extremely low. And then I can be here to help out my teammate. And I should have an angle and then boom. A little bit better. Getting there as you can tell from the first round from my aim feeling a little bit shaky. To feeling just a little bit better. But still, my teammates were definitely doing a lot more work than me in this last round. It just, it de definitely just shows and highlights. So, whenever we go into the first round, I drop my ult here just to get both of the drops. So, I grab as much as I can there. And then we position and push out in the open here. So, hollow gets fried. So, a good thing that to always do is that even if you make a massive mistake, that you cover for your teammate. 
So it's immediately what I do. I tell him I have the angle. Don't worry. Heal up. Take your time. You're perfectly fine. I know that I, ha I have his angle and I cover him. What I could do better here, my crosshairs aren't even at head level. I'm not really sure what I have my crosshairs at. They could have been way better. And also from where I was standing where I got shot from here, even though Hollow was able to recoup, I'm also cracked. If the team was even better coordinated, they would push on this and know that two of us were cracked and make it and capitalize on it. Luckily, our Pathfinder does zip up and go for a fight there. Whenever they're fighting, I decide to take the back here and at least I get a crack. I let them take the 2v1 on top and I have the angle over here to go for some positioning. So I'm trying to take my time with it, trying not to overextend. I could heal at this moment, but I kind of decide not to and then I get a knock. Now, see, see how I mentioned that I could heal right there and I decide to kind of go for the aggro play? If this was more money on the line, that would have been probably one of the dumbest plays I could definitely make because I'm going for a high risk play and immediately once he backed out the decision there should have been to pop like a cell or pop a bat to top off then go for the fight yeah granted sure I got the knock there but I also got knocks and that was a 2v1 now if we're in the battle royale I would immediately get third party and look at their HP like this other guy could essentially clutch it out if he's got more health which is what they have to do they have to reset so hollow decides to pop a full phoenix because if he goes and pushes in there could be the high liability that this other guy is going to clutch this out. And he calls for the uh, the cover here, which I do. I pull up the shield and give a cover for him again. Very much like we did at the start. He actually called for it there. So his big brain. I think I dodged maybe one shot. But it could have been the shot that could have knocked him or gotten him. And then we clutch it out. So now when we go on to the next one where we have improvement after a few arenas. So we decided to go do some duos. And I believe at the... The round here we have a pretty early fight but i'm starting to feel a lot more confident with the aim at least and we're playing together and we decide to go for a push so with duos just like as much as you would with trios you want to stay very close together which is what we do during this fight and most of the fights that you're going to see here can definitely keep my crosshairs a bit more ahead level get 32 damage there 70 and then i go for the cleanup and then i swap right around the corner and then clean it up. So I have a pretty solid start here. Definitely playing a lot more aggro and a lot more comfortably, even after just a few games. You know, just a few moments of just trying to get comfortable. It's amazing how a few games of just warm up and then also being on a new setup, but also how quickly you will adjust and improve. You just gotta give yourself time. But I even went through this and I went through Aim Lab later that night to kind of analyze. I like I already went through these VODs, so that's kind of why I know what went wrong and what didn't work. So I get a nice PK shot there. Other team right there and then boom everyone was pretty much low so at least I was able to kind of clean up and clutch all this out hit him for 30 and then we both clean up but we're all pushing we're both pushing pretty aggressively and then we're securing and getting our kills so this is a really solid round so as we're looting up grabbing all the loot we need we need to rotate so we decide to rotate we grab ourselves the the trident and we go look for fights pretty much at Olympus the best thing to do is to have the trident for a rotation even in ranked, it just gives you that free rotation. You do take split damage on the trident, so it big tip, it's really best to just kind of sit in it and wait. You know, even if you get shot, don't jump out because you're spreading the damage. So we ping, we're just playing aggro, we're kind of playing a little dumb, but we're playing smart all at the same time. We decide to kind of go for the push. I fail here, um, and I screw up the, the jump up, unfortunately. So we decided to take the zip. I was trying to boost up, and I definitely screwed it up. And then we go up top. So Hollow and I are definitely just kind of joking and calming, but the best thing to do whenever you're getting used to a new sensitivity or a new setup is to have yourself some fun. Try not to try to play some low stress games while you get used to something. Don't try to stress yourself out too much. Like don't go into a tournament changing up your setup. That's like the worst thing you can possibly do. Don't make major changes. Only make them whenever you're kind of in a positive state. And so Hollow has to reset there. And what he's doing, he actually is he's getting a bat. I go for the initial fight here. I do hear one is up above. And I should clutch this out. I almost go down, honestly. And then I call for him to go take the fight. So there's always you should always be calming with your teammates, yelling for them when to cover you and when not to. Like if you get a crack, your teammate should be able to be there to cover you whenever you need it. So we do get thirded here, and we're trying to find our angle and find our spacing. That little bit of sway there is me not used to the sensitivity. While I had some smoothness early on, I hit, hit hollow right in the back there. It's it's very apparent right there that I just wasn't comfortable with the sense from the adjustment. Usually it's a little bit smoother, felt a little bit sporadic. 
than it normally did compared to the start. So you're going to see moments where I succeed with it, moments where I don't. So we'll skip ahead. We'll go to the next fight. Right now, all we're doing is picking fights. I'm just trying to get into as many fights. And I pop my Q because we do see another team here. I get an off angle. I probably want to do that in a tournament. But it's uh, for pubs, is definitely uh, fun to do. And there we go. We uh, clutch it out. Hollow get, has six kills, and I have six kills as well. As well, we both have a total of twelve kills by the end, by the end of this. And because the teams were fighting, we decide just to go for the full rotation around, so we don't get caught out. Since so the team was directly above, so we just go for the rotation around, and we're gonna go fight them here in just a moment. I'll timestamp each of these uh, fights. So we go all the way around. And then we go for a, a fun mess of a fight, essentially. So once we rotate all the way around, we hear a lot of teams over here. I think Hollow gets shot by a, a rad. Yeah, he does. Okay, so if you're going to... The, the, the person who always should be the one entry fragging should be the Wraith. Just as a little tip for VOD review, which is a good thing. If I was up front and center, it wouldn't be good because I can't pop my Q. So what I do is I know he mentioned that he was covering the door. So then at that point, I have the Octane out in position. And I'm able to clean that up relatively quickly. So I grab everything. But then we hear another team. And while he's healing up, I go for the cover. Just make sure to cover his angle. Now, this isn't the best possible fight that I took right there. I did, wasn't expecting the other. I, I should have caught him right away. I should have disengaged immediately once I saw this. Because then I'm in a 2v1 fight. Realistically... I could have gone down here if their aim was better. Luckily, he was in the crossfire shooting him. And it was more 1v1. But if he was focusing me instead, and Hollow wasn't at this angle, I would have died. See my HP? I 100% died, and that would have been a very bad call. I go for the armor swap, and I decide to go push in to help him. and go for the infamous 9 damage there. And I do manage to clean it up. He puts the port as the bamboozle just to kind of troll. But as long as you're playing together and playing aggro, then, you know... It definitely works out. So we get cleaned up. We both have now eight kills, both to our name. And then we continue to go push. Once you get the resources, you can go push and do anything and everything that you need to do. So I try to I use my Q to pop off and go a lot further here. And always bunny hop whenever you pop your Q as Loba. Just a little little tip for those that are playing Loba. And then we go for a fight. We, we're chasing because we heard audio of where they're located. And this is where you get the jump. That's why you should always be paying attention. This is a, another big tip in terms of VOD review. This is where things started to go better for all of us towards the end of the night. And then we'll showcase the Watson game where I'm playing with two randoms. And we'll kind of break down that VOD review. So the plus side of what you see here, we're playing together. We heard audio. We heard footsteps. I think Hollow, does he catch them out first? He does. And we literally just jump on top of them. They're so distracted. They have no idea what's going on. And then, boom, we clutch it out. Easy, fast, fast kill there. Mostly because they just got caught out of position. They had, they really didn't know what was going on. So even, even if you just take a moment, just kind of joke around, it's fine to joke around, but remember the downside of doing so. Because that team, just while they were punching that, we just came up and just, I guarantee they're in the lobby just screaming like, what happened? Got completely overwhelmed. So now there's only a few squads left. We're looking for the last teams. This is how more or less how you play aggro when you make decisions. You hear gunfights and then you dip. You get in and out constantly between a gunfight and make sure that you can fight pretty comfortably. Okay, so what happened here is we did hear the team down below. Now, I think Hollow pretty much cleans them up. So what happened is that this is what you should always do with teammates. And whenever you have somebody who's really good on comms like Hollow and I, uh, we just have a, luckily we have a nice synergy together. If he pushes the door, I immediately go for the flank. So let's say he did take a lot of damage. He's holding the door. Well, I'm right here. So let's say he didn't get a lot of damage in, but he did. Just FYI, he did get a lot of damage in. And because of that, well, I will be there for the cleanup on the other angle to throw them off. So whenever you jump, it's good to have two points of pressure, two points of contesting. Now, here's a really not smart push. We, we literally say, like, you want to do something crazy? Hollow is like, let's just go right across and fight this. So here we are fighting right in the air just going for the most aggro play ever it luckily worked out in favor but hollow was extremely low that he could have got knocked there and of course the loba has a high ground here it took a lot of unnecessary damage and we could have been thirded so that was probably one of the unsmartest pushes you could ever see that actually worked out but it could have easily gone in their favor so that's just something if we were playing at a competitive level or doing ranked it was like was that smart no was it fun yes 
So make the, dis the distinction between what's fun and what's not a smart push. He even messed up his battery here that if he messed up his battery and somebody was nearby on the upper right or the upper left, that literally could have had him out of the game and done for. That would have been it, literally. Now, as you push up, there's only one squad remaining that we have. I'm taking point right now. Remember, the Wraith should always be the entry fragger, but we're playing very confident. We're just kind of rolling the lobby at this point, and we do catch one out. Okay, let me go back to that. The Watson gameplay you'll see is, is going to be a lot more different compared to how Hollow and I play because I played with two randoms and the difference that it makes there. So you're seeing the difference between VOD review when you're playing with a squad and the decision making versus whenever you're playing with two randoms. So at least you get two examples here. He says he wants to resin, but I want my kill because I want to have the same amount of kills as Hollow because we both ended up at 12 kills, meaning we both had a total of 24. Okay, so now what we're going to do is let's go look at the 4,000 damage Watson game. Let's look at this VOD. Let's break this down. I started it midway through because you know, I just kind of forgot to hit record. What's interesting is how long I'm playing with two randoms here. Two randoms of, uh, or who I'm playing with. I'm playing Watson. And as you can tell, the movement feels a little better. How I'm moving my mouse and the sensitivity and the control is just a tad better than it was that night compared to before. So I pause here and just make sure the recording is working. I was like, okay, it right, looks like I'm recording. Looks like I'm good to go. So the plus side here, nothing really happens. Whenever you're playing with randoms, you have to remember that you kind of have to work at their own pace. Everyone always asks me in the comment section, how do you accommodate for really slow teammates? Or how do you not tilt? Well, you just got to wait for them, unfortunately. You just can't push. You got you have to be moving as a squad like you saw with Hollow and I. Where luckily, we have voice comms that say, hurry up come over here, let's go push. But if you're playing with randoms, you can't really expect them just to magically move at your pace. It took a really long time to find loot. We landed a train yard, which has probably one of the, in my opinion, the worst loot tables on World's Edge. So we keep going through loot and it takes us a good while. Look how many teams. This is still a 4,000 damage game. And spoiler alert, we still died at the very end, but I still got 4,000 damage. At least you can see all the damage in the fights that we do take and the patience I exhibit because I, I, I have two teammates that I'm unsure if they're going to push. There's no voice comms and I have to read through their body language in game. And I'll try to highlight that as you can tell when they're going to push, when they're going to do X, Y, and Z. So we, we rotate, we keep getting loot. This is all great. We're looking for a fight now, and I've been looking for a fight consistently. I'm trying to lead the charge even though I really shouldn't. We're playing very defensive characters, by the way, which also makes it a little bit more difficult to push in. I don't have an Octane, I don't have a Wraith, so I know that I have to play very patiently. I believe I get scanned out here in just two seconds, so there we go. So the scan, once I know I get scanned, I know where they're coming from, boom. This is the downside with Bloodhound. If you're playing Bloodhound, look at this also as a plus side and downside. If you scan, you know where, the, where they're coming from. If you scan, you know where your enemy is. So there's a plus side and a downside to it. So all I do is I just hold, waiting to see what my teammates are going to do. If I see them full send it, I'll full send with them. But based on the current situation that you see, I don't know. They practically do, unfortunately, nothing. I have way too many cells just because the loot that I get was not really good, unfortunately. So what I have here is I do a little damage... But not enough for me to make a push, especially as a Watson. If I were to push down, it would just pretty much mean that I would... I think it would be pretty much dead. I'd go for an aggro arc star to see if I can get some damage in. I screwed up the arc star and I hit him in the head. But now that I'm in flush, I have to reset. Luckily on the right, the Caustic did notice the pressure I was putting. So he went around and pushed. So because of that, I'm aware of where he's at. And I, okay, I need to push with him. So you remember how I mentioned that you can read your teammate's body language. And sometimes like Hollow and I, when we're playing, we'll joke around. But at least I see where he's at in the map. So because he's pushing forward, I need to push just as much as aggro with him. Now, because we got a lot of damage down and I know that I, I can't necessarily push, my caustic is further back. So if I push, I'm pushing by myself, which I can't do. I know we did a lot of damage, but I do not want to go for a 50-50 because I do not know what my teammates are going to do. So I decide to stick the res at this point. I know the caustic has gas up and I know the other guy is not going to push. That's the plus side to this. So we decide to kind of go for this and then we finish it up. So we go for the swap and we clean up for the dreaded third party. Always remember that in lobbies like this, that there's always going to be the third party that's going to come up from right behind. So we kind of get our loot situated as fast as humanly possible. Like if you had a checklist, prioritize getting the swap 
and resing your teammate. If you can, res your teammate and drop armor on top of them and then go for another armor swap to help them out just to recover. Just a little tip. I didn't do it in this example. They, I had already res and we kind of recovered a bit here. I think I hear a team, a team nearby. I know we're kind of looking around. I think we're looking for the other box and just trying to recover. When you come up top here, there should be another team. We do get thirded, but it came really, really late, which is a plus side. Okay, I'll skip a little bit ahead. So we had a lot of time. Okay, this was a, a different third party. So right now, the reason why I don't push out anywhere is that if I push out, I don't have the resources as a Watson to go back. So I'm waiting for my team. And they seem to be playing, I don't know if they're in comms or not. They didn't say a single word and they never typed in chat. So I had to kind of go based on their player movement that they clearly didn't want to push. So I was just kind of respecting that that's what they wanted to do. And because that's what they wanted to do, well, I kind of honored it and just kind of stuck around with them. And through the confidence of what we did, that's whenever I continued to make a push. So I decided to fence this off because I heard a team, our, our, our lifeline does go down, which isn't good. So all I do is I put as much pressure on the height here to get them to stop as well. I whiff a lot of shots, but my aim is already a lot crisper than the, the prior day. I'm already landing, there you go, landing a lot more shots than I was. And because of that, it bought time on the push. So you see the horizon through her ultimate, which I don't know why the enemy team did that. Once we saw that, we had the pressure. They had the gas, and now they're just trying to rotate. And at least we're topped off. I was trying to see if they were going to... The Lobo's going to queue up top. And all I'm doing is holding until I see them go for a push or do something. I cannot push from my angle here, because I'm just going to push right in the open. And most likely going to die. So I don't actually push out. And I do hit him while he's rotating in the air there. So I managed to get a lot of knocks. Once I see the lifeline push, remember through body language, that showed a signal for me that they wanted to push. I was like, oh baby, let's go, let's do this. So I put the gen here for them to fall back in case they panic a little bit, get nervous, and I put the fences down just to buy a little bit of space. So I just try to give them the angle and I take some cover fire and I see them just trying to heal up. So I put another defense here and I try to figure out if they're gonna flank, what in the world they're trying to do. It's very defensive and once they have it, okay, I need to get this knock. I know I have to get this knock for our team here. This is a really dumb push, but also a really smart one. I should have slid up and went for the kill. This was really dumb. I can't believe I did this, but I did get the knock, but I could have easily went down here. I could have went down there, but luckily I didn't. And I close the door immediately. So we have a 3v2 situation. I do get the sell off, or I guess I don't, and then I go for the fry. So luckily I opened up the door, kind of bamboozled him. I could have gone down here. Remember how I mentioned that one push could have been probably one of the dumbest pushes in the world? Because if I went down there, this would have been a 2v2, which again, if you have the 3v2 fight, try to maintain the fact that you have a 3v2 fight, because that's how you're going to maintain your consistency and win. Because I know we have a 3v1, so we don't make a mistake. I just kind of go aggro on this. I go for the push and I can tell the Loba just isn't confident and I become the entry for aggro for the group. So there we go, we get the cleanup here. Solid, solid fight, not too bad. And you notice the damage, I'm about 1,122 in. So we do get thirded right after we cover. I wall bounce, or I try to wall bounce to get over to our teammate. I do notice that he's in a firefight because he gets scanned right up above. I go for the gen here, hoping that he's gonna buy himself some time because I see him throw his ult. So I figure that the best thing I can do because I see his ult to buy himself some time and space. Now what I do here is a little interesting. I really see as a PK, and I don't necessarily just go immediately for the fight. Unfortunately, our caustic does that. I play this patiently because you know going against a PK is one of the hardest and most annoying things to kind of face off against. And then he pings that the enemy was right down below. I noticed his damage that he was probably low based on the fight, and I clean that up as well. So a few things because if I went right into the fight, I probably would have died immediately if I didn't back out of that because I, I don't have a burst weapon I have a volt so I need a few seconds but my, my the enemy team was landing a lot of those PK shots right that was where the, really the benefit is so let's skip ahead and go to the next fight here so I tried an entry and okay so I know I'm really separated from the team but because I have red armor and I have a few bats I'm confident that I can run and get out of the fight but I'm also trying to get my teammates to come over with me and I hear that, okay, so what happened before, I also heard that there were shots. So let me give you a little context here. I hear shots, and I hear they're fighting over here. I do not see me on the right side, so what I'm trying to do is gate them out. I'm trying to lead my teammates over to this spot. And I keep pinging, and they keep saying, okay, so I know that they're coming. I get that they're coming, but I want to secure this spot. And so look at the pressure that I'm putting, and I'm confident that I can hold here and be okay. I do have my ultimate, so I'm not afraid, really, to get into a fight. 
and I do see, based on the map, see how they're flying in, they, they are coming over to me. They kept pinging that they were on their way. So because of that, I played a lot more confidently and I was securing this spot. Aloba does run up and she gets absolutely shredded by me and the Cossack who is now with me. And I do get a lot of damage here with the bow check bow. Hit him and then should finish him off here and then boom. So luckily I do get a knock and now we're about 2,000 damage in, 1,995. Now there's a few things I mean I could push, which is what I wanted to do and wanted to decide to do, but I'm at the beck and call of my teammates. If I go, I'm just really just going by myself. So I'm trying to play the smart. I'm looking for the Loba right now and just trying to see where she went. Make sure that there's no other teams down below here. I don't see anybody and I don't hear any audio, so I confidently syringe. And I go right back up. Because my teammates aren't getting to a firefight, I feel confident that everything's fine. I see the Loba ult out and I come back up to see if there's the other Loba. And I see her right around the corner. I'm like, oh, there she is. And then I clean it up. I take unnecessary damage though, unfortunately, going for that cleanup. But I wanted to make sure she went down so that we had a 3v2 fight. There's only a few teams left remaining. And I put these fences up as cover and I get another knock there. So now I'm 2,195 damage. I hear them down below. There's constant... Oh, you know what? Let me turn up the audio here. Technically, there were, I didn't have any comms. I feel like I should have had this up, up the whole time. I apologize. With Hollow, I had a reason not to do it. But, you know, the, the comms and everything, there's really nothing besides audio. So, not, not really much to worry about. So, I noticed she got fried, but then the lifeline gets stuck at the door. Let me turn this down, actually. I feel like now it's distracting me from actually giving you guys the tips and stuff that you need. Because the Caustic is playing aggro, I decide to play aggro. If we, if you can get your team to kind of vibe with you, like, these guys are... You'll see at the end of the round just how much damage they did. And it's not a bad thing, right? Whatsoever. I'm not making a knock at them whatsoever. But you need... you Even if your teammates are not good, you'll notice that I did probably most of the damage in most of the fights. But I'm also using them as cover and also how to position and where I need them, essentially. And I don't make any unnecessary pushes because I feel like if I go down, I'm unsure if they're going to do a necessary amount of damage. So I kind of hold here and I just wait for... I'm waiting for them to recover. Your teammates are essentially like your bullet sponges as well. Even if they're good or they're bad, they're extra damage that the enemy has to do. And they do not know who's the best person in the squad because it's a battle royale. So I noticed one ping. So I was like, okay, I get it. You guys want to rotate. So we rotate over because I didn't feel confident in the fight. So I respected that. And I decide to push in, or push in with a with, with our with our squad and try to get away. They're pinging where the enemy is, and all we need to do is just kind of hunker down and hold, because we are kind of stuck between two teams here. So 2,728 damage. You, for a, a high damage game, all it is is just you know getting towards the end zone and just doing a lot of damage in some squad fights. That's all it is, you know. I believe this ends as like a 12 kill game. I whiff some shots here. Let's go right to the action whenever stuff really started to happen. So a team finally decided this is the, the team of two. And I realize that it's only two. So I play as kind of point man as a Watson here. Definitely not the most ideal situation, but because the Caustic and Lifeline, the Lifeline cannot entry frag because she goes for the res. At least the Caustic can throw some barrels down. So I decide to kind of be the point person even though I'm a Watson. So one of them does get kind of position there is the lifeline. She does run up on me. She was flushed from the damage she took from it before. And now I know it's a 3v1 situation, so I feel confident. I should have given the gold bag to lifeline. I forgot that I held a gold bag here. Looking at the VOD now, that was a huge mistake. I think we probably would have won if I had given the gold bag. I wasn't paying attention. I forget why I did not. That's just a big mistake. That's a big mistake, guys. Reviewing the VOD. Give your lifeline the gold bag. Why the heck do I have it? That's embarrassing. Well, this is why we VOD review. If you looked at the VOD and you'll find out later, you know, we lose this round. We do not win. We rotate in because we did clean that up. So 2,985 damage. We have two squads left and I get about a thousand damage here at the end based on how much damage I do to these two squads. I unfortunately don't land these shots as he comes down. Just got to get used to that projectile distance. But I'm trying to get him before he does anything, and I just kind of whiff, but it's it's okay. Now, here's a dumb spot that I hold, but I try to wait, and I do believe I get a headshot here in just a second. There's a small spot, and I kind of flick over. Because at least I know where the squad's. Okay, that was a really dumb spot to hold. I immediately realized it because I was getting really just kind of overly confident in the lobby. I was like, oh, I will win these. And this is where ego and confidence becomes a bad thing. 
you do not want to get overly confident. I see it in tournaments too. Like I was just casting Europe and APAC North. Granted, whenever you have momentum, it's good to build on momentum, but you saw where I was just sitting there. Sitting there, could if that man had a Kraber, I would have been dead. Straight up, I would have died. So we go up and now we're a squad again. And then we're up together. I should have waited for my squad to go up and I keep hitting the railing and there we go. This dude is knocked, so now we're at 3,000 damage. I only need 900 X, Y, and Z amount of damage. I hit him for 44. I get another crack. And I go for the Phoenix and I go for the slow crawl here. I know they're on the left. He can't hit me based on this visual here. And I have the lifeline and the caustic holding, hunkering down. I'm just using them for suppressing while I kind of make a push in. So, man, I wish I knew that I had that gold bag. I would have given it to the lifeline. I don't know if it would have made a difference later. We'll see. I should headshot this guy here. Well, one less shot. There we go. Headshot, headshot him in the head. So I did secure my kill. And all I'm trying to do is pick on this guy here. He's one last one remaining on the squad. This is a nice angle. I don't think, based on the guy I just hit in the head. See, I noticed that he's shooting there. So I'm not really worried. I just know that everyone picks on him. So he does go down. So that's good. I try to finish him up. I don't know if he's got a gold self revive or no, he does not. But at least we try to secure that. All I'm doing now is putting pressure for my teammates to move up. We're at a whole disadvantage here. Being on the low ground is probably one of the worst things that you can have. And all you can do is really put pressure. Once you get enough cracks, and since I'm the one kind of holding it from a distance, the only best thing that can really happen here is my teammate can push based on the crack. By the time I get all the way up there, the battery is just going to... See, you already see it. You already see the battery. And I crack them again, but by the time they get the battery and I climb up on the wall, there's no way I'm going to be able to get up there and clutch it out. I need my teammates to kind of push on this and I'm waiting and getting constant cracks. You see me here with almost 4,000 damage at this point. I notice it, so I just kind of go for the 4k damage game. I just kind of wait. We can't really push. They're separate. There's two up top over here. I Realistically, I need for one of them to push. And our caustic just goes down. Does he go for the res? Let me see if I see the res on the bottom left on the VOD. I don't think he does. No, the lifeline was So I guess the gold bag didn't make a difference. But realistically, the caustic just got caught out. So that was a mistake if we were going to call for the caustic. You should have played with either me or the lifeline. So he's closer so he can maximize on the res. So all I do, I mean, we're playing from two different spots. And this guy and I are just kind of going for blow for blow. I feel confident if I can do enough damage to kind of crack one. I can make a push on my own, but that never happens. The lifeline, I don't know how she's getting caught out. Let me see if the bullet shoots from across the way. We'll find out in a moment. No, she just gets fried. I don't know how she got caught out of position. I wish she just came over to me so we can hold this down. And so this is the mistake that the Loba made. She already made a mistake and I could have actually clutched out this 1v3, but I missed a few shots. Notice how this other individual's caught out and he's gonna take a long time to rotate to me. And I almost crack him, but he's going to have to heal. So I know that, and I immediately hear the res, and I go for the push at this angle. So I miss a few shots there, and I hit the other guy. And this is where the mistake happens. I, I, I wish that I had the better spray there. And he also had a gold bag. The enemy did. At this point, I had already lost. There's no way I was going to win it once that res happened. I just needed to push immediately, and then we lose. So not a bad round, it went on the cracks, maybe I could have gone up and made a play, but I was very unconfident with my teammates. And maybe if I made a push, I could have gotten them to make a decision, but it just didn't really happen that way. But it's okay, this was a really good round, got 4,000 damage, got a lot more comfortable with my aim, as you can tell. So if we take a look here in the breakdown and damage, you'll see that... What happened? Like if I had four, I actually had more than that. I had 4,597. So could almost had a 5,000 damage game. If we just, if I cleaned up a little bit there towards the end, I guarantee it would have been like a 5k game. Cause if I knock the other guy and then knock the other one and then kind of went for a finisher or something, then boom, it would have happened. Our Cossack just didn't do a whole lot. He went down at the end there from what you could see. And that's really what spelled the opening. And then unfortunately, because the lifeline and I were separate, the angle that the lifeline was holding was getting shot. The lifeline should have definitely taken a different angle there. I could have pinged. I could have done a little bit more for my teammates as well. But again, I hopefully you guys found this very helpful, very insightful. Hopefully there was something to learn here as you're going through your VODs. A lot, a lot of good things happened. A lot of bad things happened. But you notice how my aim as I started to practice and got better through aim lab, how it started to really improve. You, you just notice that there was a lot more stability there of how I'm sitting. 
and it just it just made a world of a difference and pretty much snagging every shot that I wanted to snag. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll wrap up here with a little NVIDIA GeForce Now outro. And I'll see you guys in the next video. So once you load up Apex Legends with NVIDIA GeForce Now, you can enable capturing highlights. Now that you have this enabled, once you hit a clip, it gives you notification in game that appears in the upper right of the screen. So let's check out some of the clips I got from the round. So as we wrap up the video, don't forget to share your clips as you VOD review and upload them to gfnlegends.com. And once you upload them to the site, a box will prompt you to share on Twitter. You can win again, just as a reminder, an Apple iPad, Google Pixelbook, and just so much more. Again, it's just, it's free. It's just nice, just nice to, ha nice to have. So GeForce Now gives you, just as a reminder, a beefy computer without having to invest thousands. And with the GPU shortage right now, I mean, it's just your shot to try RTX on to see if you like it. And to see if it's something you want to switch to from console, get some feelers out there. There's different plans depending on what to achieve and your session time. And again, the GeForce Now sweepstakes is in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in the next video.